Hello and welcome to Investing Confidential. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, I hit the thousand subscribers. Yay! No big deal. It's still very disheartening, but that, that's, uh, you know, when I look at some of these other uh, financial YouTubers out there, uh, I mean, all they're doing is selling you education programs and trading strategies and and uh, hawking, you know, uh, these these trading apps from China, other places. I mean, I'll tell you what, if you ever see me hawking some kind of trading application or trying to sell you something, just unsubscribe and delete my YouTube because it, it's it's ridiculous. I don't do this for the money. I do this as a as a hobby, basically, to pass on knowledge. And um, if you're subscribing to someone that is trying to sell you some kind of course uh, on options trading, commodities trading, whatever trading strategies, or trying to trying to get you to to take some free money from a trading app, man, run and hide. I mean, these people are not professionals. I mean, I look at the backgrounds; they're not professionals. They're they're doing this. They're entertainers and doing it, hopefully, to get money off of you. But anyway, that's my two cents. So, 2024 is going to be the most volatile year ever recorded. I said that in the last video. I'm going to keep saying it. Four plus billion people are going to the polls starting in two weeks with Taiwan. Uh, the volatility is going to be off the charts, folks. Off the charts. So if you're a trader and you and you can and you could trade these type of events, go for it. Otherwise, I say sit it out or buy value and hold on to it. Like US small caps, like some emerging market countries, like gold, uh low vol stuff, value. Okay. So let's let's just go into it. They ramped up stocks in 2023 for no reason. Okay, and you're gonna pay the price this year. But I'm here to talk about housing and how the housing market market is gonna suffer even worse than stocks. I mean, if you own a home or you're thinking of buying a home, you have to watch this video. Okay, there's no doubt you have to watch this video because it's all together, it's all linked. Okay, and I'm gonna mention first before I go into how I'm gonna mention about the, the something that's been talked about today that I've been talking about for a while, it's the U.S. debt. Uh, this is tied to housing, 100% tied to housing, 100% tied to stocks. And so the first thing we're going to do is let's look at this U.S. debt clock, okay? You've all heard of it, okay? The, the U.S. debt clock has been around for a while. You see it here. I mean, what are the things, what's the things to focus on? Things are focusing on this. We hit $34 trillion in debt uh, as, a, as, a, as a country. Uh, yesterday or this morning, 34 trillion. To put that in perspective, as you can see right underneath there, our federal debt to GDP is now 122%. In 2000, it was 59%. In the 60s, it was 53%. That was coming off you know, World War II where it was high, but nowhere close. To, this is the highest ever recorded. And when you ask yourself, we're not in, we really aren't in a war. I mean, no one's threatening us. Okay. We, we, we obviously got to this level because we spent, I don't know, something, what, 11 trillion on the debacle in the Middle East, the Iraq war, got nothing out of it. I mean, if we wiped them out and got out of there, that's one thing, but we, we, we wiped them out and stayed and thousands of people killed, spent trillions of dollars on what? And what happened here in this country? No. Do we do we solve the wealth gap? Did we do did we solve the problems with housing in the industry? Have we solved the educational problems? No, it's still there. We could solve that for less than a trillion, but and they spent eleven trillion on the war. This is insanity, and now they're spending even more. And so look look at on the right here in the middle. Okay, this is what we take in in taxes four point five trillion, but really income taxes, which is what everyone pays. Okay, it's about 2.2 trillion. Do you know that with this debt reading 34 trillion, we're literally at a debt 
payment, a debt interest payment of one trillion per year, which is more than we're paying uh, in our defense budget. That's half of what we take in income taxes. This is debt, interest on debt, and it's going. By the way, it's going higher. Okay, the powers that be can't wait to get. Look, they want they want you to believe they want they want they're manipulating the Fed. They need the rate cuts more than you, more than me, more than anybody, because of this debt situation. This is a nightmare. Okay, they are forced. They need to force the Fed to lower rates, because, by the way, the U.S. government is technically bankrupt. They're not going to tell you that. They're not going to tell you that. But if you look at all the outlays, the interest, and everything else, we got serious issues, serious cash flow issues in this country. I mean, if we were a stock, we'd be rated B, triple B, let's say, or double B. I mean, not we're not we're not triple A anymore. And as I said, we're going to get downgraded very soon, very very soon. And you think this isn't a something urgent, okay? Two months, less than two months ago, we we're at 33 trillion. Now we're at 34 trillion. That means by the end of the year, we're going to be close to 40 trillion and maybe even more if the White House and Congress are allowed to spend crazy money, throwing money overseas to fight wars that we no need to be in, spending money like crazy, like drunken sailors on defense, supporting. All these worthless NGOs like the UN, they need to exist. Look, they, the UN was needed 40, 50 years ago, no longer needed. No longer needed. There's no reason for we spending the kind of money that we do. And both parties are to blame for this is not political. Not political. All this is going to blow. Okay, unless the US reigns in its spending, it's going to blow. This means the end of the, the way of life that we know it. Okay, not obviously destruction but it, it it's bad and you know looking looking at historical perspective as i mentioned was the highest debt to gdp we've probably ever ever had even since the first war, even including world one and world war ii where we had to spend tons of money to build up the war effort we had to we had no choice and what is the result of all this inflation out of control spending government money printing means inflation and if you believe the Fed's going to cut rates, you're you're smoking something. And this is going to have a major impact on the U.S. dollar. That's going to be the theme for 2024, the U.S. dollar. This is why a lot of my focus this year is going to be on investments outside the U.S. So let's now look at the effect on housing, uh, because we need to look at the current situation. Uh, how we got here, because it's not what they want you to believe how we got here, and what's going to happen. So real, the realtors, everyone involved in the real industry, Wall Street, government, they're all lying to you. That's number one. They're completely lying to you. Okay, And you can't believe anything they say. You got, but you have to look at the data. They have data. So let's look at this data. So first, we have new home inventories. Okay, They're spiking, as you can see here. Why are they spiking? Well, these home builders have a lot of money. They borrowed money. They, they, got, they sold stock into the market, whatever. And they've got to spend it, especially the borrowings. If you don't spend it, the banks take it away. So they're just building homes, hoping for the best. Okay, And it doesn't make any sense because, as you can see here, the, the home building sentiment is a disaster. New home builders, they have really bad. So why are they building? Because they have no choice. They borrowed money and they've got to spend it. Again, like drunken sailors, they have to spend it. What they should do is give it back. But they know. This, this always happens. Always happens. So that the inventory is exploding. And even we're starting to see... Existing home inventory start to creep up. It hasn't gone up a lot yet, but this is going to be the theme of 2024. We're going to see a big spike in existing home inventory as people are forced to sell because they need to move, because they want to move, whatever the case may be. We're going to see a big increase in uh, in this 
inventory as you see here. And, you know, the business of home sales, and which is a huge business, this is dead, folks. I mean, I know every single one of you out there probably knows someone as a realtor. I know two realtors, three realtors, you know, housewives, whatever the case may be, people looking for second jobs, they all became realtors. It's probably, I wish I had a chart of, of realtors, licensed realtors. It's through the roof. Okay, that business is dead. They're all going to find something else to do. The bottom line, there's no liquidity like everything else. Okay, this all comes down to liquidity. I told you, talked about the last video. There's no liquidity in anything, and especially in houses, nothing. Okay, so how did we get here? The pandemic was a catalyst, uh, but certainly not the cause of the problem. You can go back a year to one of my older videos and, where I talk specifically about the real problem. And the real problem basically is Wall Street, is finance, is Blackstone, their, their obsession to invest in buy to rent because of the low leverage, or excuse me, the high leverage and the low interest rates, thanks to the Fed. Okay, it, Fed went to zero. They knew they were going to zero. So it was an easy play. You can lever six, seven, ten times, which obviously as an individual, we, can, we can't do except really buying our primary residence. They could do that, you know all day, uh, buy houses at cap rates of six, seven, eight percent, which is what was the case in 2009, 10, 11, when they started this craziness, lever it and deliver investors and create massive amounts of fees and deliver huge returns to investors. So everyone started doing it. And investors started buying up massive amounts of inventory and here we have uh basically the proof okay and the mainstream media is starting to come around to see this i was talking about this a year ago as i mentioned so here we here we look at some major u.s cities and investors meaning with cash meaning these institutional investors hedge funds etc and their percentage of home sales, okay? And as you can see, there was a massive spike starting at the time of the pandemic and still going on to a certain extent today, but really stopped about six to nine months ago when rates spiked. But look look at the percentage. So when a realtors tell you this is, uh, investors have nothing to do with anything, they own a very small percentage of the overall homes, they, they're correct. But what they're not telling you Okay, and, and this is all existing homes, but over the last 10 years and really accelerating the last four or five years, investors have been a massive percentage of the Delta increase. So overall, you know, a realtor will tell you this is bad information because, you know, there's X, you know, 50 million homes and they only represent a million. I, that's, that's all true, but that's not giving you what the, the problem. The problem is that they've taken advantage of zero interest rates and were the massive buyers, huge increased buyers over the last three to four, even going back seven or eight years. And they just accelerated. Okay. And here's some anecdotal evidence. This is Charlotte, North Carolina. One little development. Investors bought 50% of the homes, 50%. That drove up prices, and obviously the impact on first-time home buyers was, was brutal. Okay, and here's just one block. One block. Look how many homes. Over 30% of the homes bought by investors on one block. This is, again, in Charlotte. I mean, this is this is... This is this is brutal. Okay? And you know, no one no one, you know, and first people say, ah, what do you care? No one cares. Well, you know, it does have an impact, folks. It does have an impact. It has an impact on the neighborhood. It's not good. Okay? And then you the, the other phenomenon that kicked in was Airbnb, where individuals decide they're going to take advantage of the same thing that the institutions did late in the game, obviously. And they started buying up these homes. And I mean, this was a shocking article that I read in the Times here. 
Okay, the the the, the impact in small college communities, college towns, of Airbnb, people renting out homes just for eight weeks, and that covers the entire year because again, mortgage rates were almost were nothing. Artificially, by the way, this was all artificial. So the impacts were are, have been have been very uh, very bad for neighborhoods. Okay, and it creates a nightmare scenario for existing homeowners. And look, bottom line, folks, they're driving up these prices. And for most people, when you start, the price is more important than actually the interest rate, and because of the down payment. And there you go. You see the decimation. And another factor is you you know we're seeing today in terms of price we're seeing now more people you know sort of walking get not getting mortgages and being and and we're seeing deals fall apart at record numbers you could see here real estate deals falling apart because people aren't qualifying it's very bad okay and as i said you know wall street buying most of your homes not good prices you out combined with high interest rates it makes it a nightmare but relief could be on the way i mean i'm not big on uh the government coming in but you know there has been legislation proposed to take wall street out of the housing market i don't like it but it is what it is but again it's it's kind of late in the game because with interest rates at these levels, the, the, the investors aren't buying what they used to buy anymore. They're not buying. So, I mean, I wish these guys had done this about 10 years ago, but they didn't. And rates going back to normal will has solved the problem. But the problem now is these investors are holding these homes. They're not selling them yet. They're not selling them yet, but at, at some point they will. And, you know, as rates begin, this is not going to sound good, but as rates begin to drop, okay, at slightly due to the weakening of the economy, uh, the home inventory is going to start going up. It's going to explode. And the buyers are going to get scared. The investors are going to get scared. And then you're going to have a panic and you're going to have a puke. And then prices will come off. Um, but it takes a while. I mean, this just, we, we have to see prices revert back to 2019. That's sort of the, the base. Okay, pandemic was a joke. This the 2019 is the base. Uh, and it's got to come back. And the problem also is that you've got household debt levels are through the roof. Debt service levels are through the roof. This is mainly because of credit cards and other things. But as you know, at these as these mortgage rates stay higher, this this debt to income ratio is going to going to stay at very high levels. And this is why I mentioned that a lot of real estate deals are falling apart. So the the overall housing situation is is dire, very dire. I mean, you look at, as we talked about, the income needed to afford a typical home. It used to be banks would give you a mortgage with the taxes and rates at 30% of your income. Today, the average home, it, it's almost over 41%. So, so again, as I talked about, the deals falling apart, this is the reason. This has to revert back. It has to revert back. And as you can see here, this is the mean reversion we, we have to look at. This is the most important chart before you buy a house. If you have a house, <laughs> I would think about selling because this, this is going to have to mean revert. So you've got housing prices through the roof, but you've got hourly earnings. And hourly earnings are going up, as we, as we all know. They have to go up with inflation. But... If you were to have a big spike in hourly earnings to reach this housing, to adjust for the housing price, that would be very, very inflationary. And do you think the U.S. government wants that? No. So what do you think has to happen? The most non-political thing, housing prices going down doesn't hurt politicians. 
doesn't. So that's what's going to happen in 2024 and, and beyond. You're going to see a big, massive correction in housing prices. There is no other way out. No other way out. And that means, according to these charts, 30, 40% lower. That's the reality. Um, and this is very recessionary. Okay, as we talked about deflation, recession, all of this is bad for the US dollar. This is the theme. So if you can wait to buy a house, I would wait. I wouldn't worry about the mortgage rates, focus on the prices. Okay, it's payments that matter. The payments are obviously the mortgage rate with 30 years, it's not as big a factor as you might think, but the big factor is the price. It's a function of rate and price. The price has to come down. It will come down. So if you're if you're an investor in real estate, not only should be careful out there, you should be selling at these levels because it is unsustainable. Single family homes, unsustainable. So be very, very careful out there.